Our last speaker, but certainly not our, um, certainly not least, is Blanca Piazuelo. She is a pathologist uh, at Vanderbilt right now. She completed her medical school and residency at the Universidad del Valle in Colombia. She then trained under uh, Dr. Palayo Correa for over a decade. Uh, and she currently works as a research associate professor in the Division of Gastroenterology at Vanderbilt. Thank you. Thanks to Rob and you have for the kind invitation. It is truly an honor to be here. And uh, I thank you all for staying until the last talk of the summit. I'm gonna thank you for these uh, high technologies and the state of the art stuff to the basic pathology. So basically my, my talk is gonna be pathology 101. So to remind you basic concepts of gastric atrophy and how this can help for the classification of individuals that could be followed for surveillance. First, I'm gonna make a, a brief definition of the gastric atrophy in the Correa cascade. Second, I will describe a little bit about the organ origin system for the identification of patients that could be um, could, be, could benefit from surveillance, and third, some caveats of these uh, classifications. This is my version of the Correa Cascade. I'm gonna bring your attention to these two stages, which are the ones that we try to follow patients to avoid uh, advanced gastric cancers. So gastric atrophy is defined as the loss of native glands, whether replaced or not by other type of epithelium. With this definition, intestinal metaplasia is part of the gastric atrophy of the stomach. Actually, once the atrophic process starts at this point, it continues all the way. Unless the patient regress from, from atrophic gastritis without metaplasia to non-atrophic gastritis, gastric atrophy remains for all the process. We always mention the highest advanced lesions of the diagnosis for the patient, so when we say intestinal metaplasia, it's obvious that the patient has already atrophy. This is a parenthesis. Actually, my talk was Olga and all gym, but uh, over these last two days, I've been changing a little bit to include a few more things that I, will, I wanted to bring your attention. This is a case <clears throat> of diffuse gastric cancer. And what you can recognize right away is are these islands of intestinal metaplasia. You can recognize clearly the goblet cells, and this is intestinal metaplasia. This is from a TMA from Chile. Actually, this was an old picture that I had in my files uh, from a long time ago, because I found this very interesting when I found this. Everybody has the idea, or the, the concept is that uh, intestinal metaplasia is only associated with the, with the intestinal type of gastric cancer. So I wanted to bring this to remind you that a big percentage of um, diffuse type cancers uh, actually have intestinal metaplasia around or inside the tumor. In a closer view, we can really see the goblet, the re resignant ring cells, which are these cells with clear cytoplasma as we have seen in the last few talks. And this is just a reminder that we cannot think intestinal metaplasia is not related at all with diffuse cancer. And uh, also I included this, there are, there are many papers that show actually this. I included these two just to give you some statistics. I try not to include many numbers because we have, we have had a lot of information during the last two days. But this is the original Lauren 1965 paper that, that uh, described the classification among between intestinal and diffuse. And here you can see that 91% of the intestinal type uh, cancers had intestinal metaplasia, but also a 50% of the diffuse type cancers had intestinal metaplasia. And these are other three more recent papers, all from Korea, that shows the same trend. This one has lower percentages, but actually this paper uh, only classified extensive metaplasia. They put in one group negative or mild, and in another group extensive. So that's why it's slow, but actually the trends are the same. 
Going back to, to multifocal atrophic gastritis, which is the term that I prefer, these are variants of the, of the process. Non-metaplastic atrophy, which is plain loss of glands, or these glands may be replaced with this, mainly with these two types of metaplasia, intestinal and pseudopyloric. This is one example. This is a gastric biopsy with intestinal metaplasia. And I like the multifocal atrophic gastritis term because it actually reflects the multifocal nature of the, of the process. Here with this stain that is Alzheimer's blue pass, the pink color is normal gastric mucosa and the blue is intestinal metaplasia. So clearly you can see three different foci, and the process starts like single glands and then several glands confl are confluent and the lesions get bigger. I'm gonna show you just briefly uh, normal antral mucosa and, and uh, atrophic lesions and then I will show you the corpus. This is antral mucosa, normal, these are the normal glands that are the base of the, the mucosa. Here is an example of severe atrophy. Almost all the glands are lost, just a few remain in this part. There's a lot of infiltr infiltrate. And all these um, bands of uh, pink tissue is fibrotic tissue. And this is an example of complete replacement, almost complete replacement by intestinal metaplasia. So these two are part of the spectrum of atrophy in the stomach. In the corpus, the glands are different, they're tubular, mainly composed by chief and parietal cells. This is a moderate to severe case of uh, atrophic without metaplasia. And uh, you can see the glands are shorter. There's a lot of loss of parietal and chief cells. And in this example, there is intestinal metaplasia in this area, recognized by the goblet cells. But also you can see a little a focus of, of um, of um, normal, normal not, but atrophic uh, uh, fundus glands. Another type of metaplasia in the corpus is the pseudopyloric metaplasia. All, all that I have shown is human tissues. In this case, this is a biopsy from corpus. In this area, you can recognize more or less normal density of uh, glands. In the center of the image, there is an area of atrophy where you see that the glands are very small and there are lots of parietal and chief cells. In this little gland to the right, there is a gland that is totally different and it has completely lost the parietal and chief cells. This is pseudopyloric metaplasia. And this gland on the, on the side is going to the same process. It's less advanced, but it's also losing the chief and parietal cells. So this is pseudopyloric metaplasia and this is part of the atrophy of the corpus. By definition, only occurs in the oxyntic mucosa. SPEM, that you may have heard a lot in the literature, is used, the term SPEM is used to refer to a similar process which occurs in the animal models of disease. Uh, this is a, the, the gastric mucosa, the oxyntic mucosa of a Mongolian gerbil infected with Helicobacter pylori. And the asterisks show glands that have completely lost the chief and the parietal cells. Uh, this is the main type of metaplasia that we see in animal models and not intestinal metaplasia. So it is important because it's very confusing in the literature. People talk about metaplasia and it's a totally different lesion. So in animal models, you have to be very careful when you interpret metaplasia because usually it's this type of metaplasia and not intestinal metaplasia. Now I'm gonna move to the Olga and Olgin systems. Uh, they were developed based on the evidence that the extension of the histological atrophy correlates with the risk of gastric cancer. And four, five stages are uh, recognized in each of these staging systems, zero to four. Uh, these are supported recently by international guidelines like MAPS-2, the Kyoto classification, and the Maastricht 5 Florence. Uh, I'm trying to keep the numbers to a minimum, but this is a meta-analysis that, that, that looked at uh, the relation between the Olga three and four, which are considered, the, these two stages three and four are considered high risk, and zero to two are considered low risk. So all these uh, studies 
showed significant risk of uh, gastric cancer. The Olga Sejin system was the first that appeared in the literature more than 10 years ago and uh, includes the extension of non-metaplastic atrophy, intestinal metaplasia, and pseudopyloric metaplasia. The stages 0 to 2 are considered low risk of progression to cancer, and the 3 and 4 are considered as high risk to cancer. So it is, uh, it is um, encouraged that uh, individuals that are in the, in the stages 3 or 4 go to under, um, surveillance, to endoscopic surveillance. So here is a, is a combination of uh, a score of atrophy in the antrum and in the corpus. And of course, this atrophy includes all these variants. For these proposed stages, actually, five biopsies, the updated CNA system, and recommended these two biopsies from corpus can submit in one jar, and these other three can be submitted in a different jar for pathology. But it's important that these two compartments are are, are submitted separately. How, do, how is the scoring done? Each of these rows is a biopsy, represents a biopsy. Here is a normal gland from the antrum, and here's a normal gland from the corpus. So the pathology should assess the percentage of glands that are atrophic, and that includes the blue lines are intestinal metaplasia, and these small glands represent atrophy without metaplasia. And these are the ones that are difficult to see, when you don't have enough experience, and this is the problem, uh, and this is what causes the, the high inter-observer variation. So after each biopsy is scored about, with a percentage, uh, an average is calculated for the antrum and for the corpus. And then these scores are, the score for the antrum uh, for the corpus come from the 30, 60, or more than 60% of atrophy in each compartment. And then, goes to the chart, if you had, in the case, previous case, you had two atrophy scores in the antrum and one in the corpus, and this patient is supposedly to be in a stage two. The old gene basically used the same concept, but only evaluates intestinal metaplasia. And it was proposed, and there is a better inter-observer agreement, because intestinal metaplasia is easier to diagnose than atrophy without metaplasia. The stages are the same. I'm going to show you in one single biopsy the difference, the big difference that can be in a case uh, between the Olga and Olgin systems. This is a biopsy that you can see has extensive atrophy. Here are big loss of glands, and here are here is, uh, two foci of intestinal metaplasia here and here. So if you score this biopsy with the uh, Olgin systems, you can tell that 30% of the biopsy has metaplasia. If you classify this biopsy by the Olga system, you can say that probably 80 or 90% of the glands, the normal glands, are lost. There's few remaining here and few remaining here that look atrophy, atrophic. So it is important to understand this concept because the Olga stage cannot be lower than the old gene. And this is a very confusing in the literature because there are papers that show all genes, stages three, four, and then Olga zero. That's not possible. Uh, another caveat and considerations for the um, Olga system um, is needed. The complete thickness of the mucosa is needed, and the tissue has to be well oriented. So the histo technologies need to be trained to get this uh, complete thickness of the mucosa because if not, you cannot uh, assess the, the loss of glands. For all gym, even if the biopsy is very small or bad oriented, uh, anyway, intestinal metaplasia, if it's there, it's easier to diagnose. Another, uh, another consideration is that in both Olga and Olgi systems, if you have extensive atrophy in the antrum, like here in this case, extensive atrophy in the antrum and no atrophy in the corpus, this is a stage three. And actually, this contradicts some of the recent guidelines that, for example, MAPS2 says that oh, um, to consider that you have extensive metaplasia, it has to be in antrum and corpus. And uh, also, the AGA says that they consider extensive metaplasia if it's in the corpus, independent if it's antrum or not. And they consider that if it's only in the antrum, 
that's low risk. So this is one thing that you should think about whenever you apply any system. For example, this is, an, this is um, a hypothetical case, which is uh, you can have, for example, 60% of three biopsies, the three biopsies from antrum with intestinal metaplasia, and 30% in both biopsies in the corpus. And still this patient, when you translate this to the scores, this is a score two, a score one, which you will ha have a stage two. So this is supposedly a low risk stage, but actually this patients should be a good candidate for surveillance. I was happy to hear two talks in the last two days, uh, one from Singapore and one from Korea, uh, where they actually recognize stage two and low stages in both systems. So it is interesting that yes, uh, stages two can be actually high risk. Uh, this is another thing that was interesting because there is a misconception that a good pathologist can recognize if you're in the antrum or in the corpus, just looking at the biopsies. And this is an entire biopsy re re replaced by intestinal metaplasia. And this is not a rare phenomenon. In the last, in the last um, 500 biopsies with intestinal metaplasia from the Colombian cohort, there was a 15% of biopsies that were completely replaced by metaplasia. So there's no good pathologist that can tell you if this is antrum on corpus. So this is a good thing to, uh, to consider. Now I'm gonna take a few more minutes of your time to talk about the, the classification of the intestinal metaplasia. There are several classifications. Uh, the, the, probably the, easy, the most basic that could be most of the time seen in H&E, uh, recognizes two types, complete and incomplete. On the left, there is an example of complete metaplasia with these big, well-developed goblet cells and uh, enterocytes with broad border that you can see here. And at the base of the glands, there, is, there are panet cells. So this is complete because, uh, because it resembles in a better way the the small intestine uh, epithelium. The incomplete or colonic uh, presents a lot of droplets of mucins the different, of different types. There is no enterocytes, no brush border, and you can see panet cells, but usually are uh, very few or, or absent. These two, I wanted to say that these are two very well characterized examples, but this is not always like this. If this was this easy, it would be, there would be no problem in the classification. But actually, in real life, these are very mixed. Sometimes there's a gland complete and the next are not incomplete. And, uh, or, or the characteristics are very mixed and it's difficult to, to classify. This is another example to show you that also, this is complete, this is incomplete. Besides the cellular characteristics, the incomplete type tends to have these irregular glands like some ramification and the architecture of the glands, is not like this straight glands that you can see in the, in the complete. Usually this incomplete type is the one that has been associated and is associated in many studies with progression to cancer. There are many, many studies showing this, uh, this association of the incomplete with cancer. I just brought, uh, Technic the recent technical review uh, in which Shalja, here present, she put a lot of effort and a lot of time, uh, and they found that incomplete metaplasia is associated with a relative risk of 3.3 when it's uh, compared with the complete. And um, some international guidelines support endoscopic follow-up for those individuals that have incomplete time metaplasia. In conclusion, intestinal metaplasia cannot be considered a different lesion than atrophy, but one of its variants. The, a good labeling and processing of the biopsy samples are determinants of the pathology report. Uh, the Olga system includes all variants of atrophy, while the Olgin only evaluates intestinal metaplasia. Olga and Olgin stages three and four really indicate high risk, 
but the surveillance in low-risk stages should be individualized. And finally, the incomplete metaplasia is associated with high risk of gastric cancer and may be used as a marker for surveillance. Thank you. <laughs>